Hey, this is Cameron, and welcome to the practice session. Well, let's go ahead and jump into it. Yeah, you know the drill. Give myself a bar to help me play this Bach. So, I actually have something kind of special planned for this one, which that seems to be the case for every single one so far. I always got something cooking, don't I? So we're going to start things off with what I have to think about the most, which is the Adagio. I'm going to learn one or two measures there, and you're going to see them. Uh, and then, instead of going into the Fugue, I actually want to go into a uh, masterclass by Julian Bream on the A minor Fugue. Uh, specifically that one too, because it was originally G minor. So I'm pretty sure it's on like the same uh, arrangement. So that'll be pretty interesting. It's like 50 minutes long, so I think I might break it up into like three parts. Like we'll watch like the first third of it and then the next couple we'll keep on going with it. Or maybe that'll give us some insight. I think I'm gonna start doing that more, like incorporating like master classes and other people playing. Just because I feel like I would like for this to be educational. Like, you should probably get something from this, too. Not just hear my dumb voice. So I think that's a good way to do it. Uh, rely on other smarter, better people. And then I'll work on the fugue a little bit, but I probably won't play that much of it, because it's all about just memory right now. So we're kind of in the in-game for that one. Maybe the next time you hear it, we'll be in the extravaganza. I don't know. Probably not. I still want practice playing it. That's pretty much it with me. How are you doing? Is it morning for you? How's your morning going? It's morning for me right now. There's nothing quite like a morning, is there? when you have the whole day ahead of you. Whole day of practice. We'll see if I can get any better today. That'd be pretty cool. That is my plan for today, for this morning. So let's jump into it. All right, into the Adagio, and I have my morning Coke Zero. Because of course, I have to have that. Fun fact about me, I drink like six Coke Zeros every day. Uh, and I don't want to hear how it's unhealthy, because it's fine. I'm gonna get into the Adagio now, so I will see you on the other side. I am actually gonna warm up with a fugue, um, because I can do what I want. I had to do a costume change and turn the air on because it is getting warm. Back into the Adagio. I think I'm about ready to play this one for you. Come on over. All right, well, how about this? This is gonna be the bulk of my playing for today. Oh, I know, isn't that sad? I'm just gonna play everything for you. So, here it is. And this is the new part. chord. Yeah, you like that? Beautiful. Um, it is beautiful. I played it really bad at the end there. Um, yeah, and there were like counting issues and stuff that I need to work through. This is a work in progress, uh, but we're almost done with the first page. We only have a couple more measures left, so should be a few more sessions. Next thing on the docket, let's head over to the computer. In lieu of me just practicing the fugue, I thought it would be a good idea for us to watch Julian Bream, Masterclass, 1978, J.S. Bach Fugue in A minor. That's what we're doing. So we might watch like a third of it today, and we'll just see what happens. Let's get into it. Recognize that? So probably a lot of this will be cut, so you'll see where the cuts are. I'll keep the good stuff, though. An 18th century farmhouse set in the Wilshire countryside. 
here when he isn't away on concert tours, the guitarist Julian Bream tends the lawns and flower beds with the same dedication that's become the hallmark of his playing. He's doing that. He's going to mess his nails up gardening. Are you serious? An old stable now serves as a workshop for a guitar maker. And above, there's a room for informal concerts, recording, and table tennis. In this third program, the music is by Johann Sebastian Bach. Woo! The fugue from his first violin sonata. It's often played on the lute. But in tonight's program, Julian Bream works on the equally effective transcription for guitar. Equally effective. Taking part are two Canadian guitarists, Dan Beckerman and Lynn Gangbar, and Londoner Gerald Tolan. Dan Beckerman was born in Toronto and studied the guitar both there and at the Royal College of Music in London. Gerald Tolan from London studied at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. Got to be in this friend group, huh? Lynn Gangbar, like Dan Beckerman, was born in Toronto and began playing the guitar when she was seven. And she has well, awesome hair. Okay, yeah, that's great, but I, I want to get to the master class part. I don't care about the whole uh, dynamic, this like weird Seinfeld character guitar program. I don't care. Oh wow, look at how he's like accenting those notes. I've never even thought of that. Very good. That's fine. Thank you very much. This is a really <laughs> magnificent fugue. It shows for the performer just how imaginative they can be in the use of dramatic inflections in the sound and also uh, in dynamic inflections. The fugue was originally written for the violin and also exists uh, in a version for the organ and also for the lute. And since guitarists are very keen to poach upon lute territory, um, we find that the actual version for the lute transposed to A minor sounds very good on the guitar. Perhaps about 1880, Tariga made an arrangement which was, in fact, uh, an arrangement of the violin version, which I must say is very interesting, but of the three versions, uh, it is, in my opinion, the least attractive, or perhaps the most dull. The version that I use myself is a, mi a mixture, a collation, with, I think, as I remember correctly, a couple of licks from the organ version. A couple of licks. However, I like hearing that vernacular from uh, Mr. Bream over here. Could you begin? Ooh, should I know uh, which version I'm playing? Because I couldn't even answer that, honestly. I might be rushing this when I play it. I might be going a little too fast. His dynamics are so good. It's so interesting seeing where he plays it in different places than me. Yeah, it makes me want to like reconsider my whole life. Where did it all go wrong? Was it when I was two? Was it when I was three? Was it 14? I don't know. Ooh, God! And I think in a work of this monumental magnificence, that one must... This is just a roast of uh, Jerry Seinfeld over here. ...keep the rhythm as controlled as possible. Yes. There were certain passages that suddenly changed tempo. In fact, when... He rushed that section at the end when he stopped him. That's probably why. ...stopped you. Yes. We always went into another piece in terms of the change of tempo. Ah! I think we should try and arrive correct or the tempo that you like and really stick to it. Apart from the fact that it gives a feeling that the piece is made up of many sections, which it, which it is, but one of the, the great important things as a musician, particularly in a work of this nature, is to give the feeling that when you sort of heard the first note, you almost heard the last note. You've got to give a wonderful overall sweep to the work. 
And the only way you can do that, integrate each musical section as smoothly as possible. I mean, it was rather like driving a car in your performance without a clutch. You know, okay, you've got it in the gear. God, dude, how do you... I don't know if I could handle uh, getting roasted on Julian Reem's show over here. Man! So basically, play in time, you fool. That's what he's saying. There was an awful lot of noise and uh, shudder. God! It needs, it needs a great deal of clutch control, this piece. And so you've got to really try... You're playing as like a broken car without a clutch. It's just... <laughs> oh my... By using tone color and all sorts of artifice, to give the feeling that the piece in itself is one gigantic, uh, magnificent, beautiful note. With regard to the other aspects of the performance, it was a little bit d pedestrian. It was a little bit... I mean, it was very solid, but you know, there again... When you were playing in time, it sounded boring, and when you were playing out of time, you were just wrong and, and jagged and jarring. Man, you can't win with this guy. I, I tend not to be too determined at the beginning. Yeah, how do you do it, Julian? There's plenty of other music later on, which one could be very determined about. So I give it a little lightness. Not flippancy, but lightness. And another thing, hmm. remember that there is a rest before the first note. I always, myself, do this. I, just a little nod of the head, or even take a breath, a tiny breath. It gets you into it, you see. But if you start going, the rhythm's lost. Very sustained. You notice oh man, he's a bad mother, I'll tell you what. Oh, he's really good. I'd love to hear him just play it. Tenor and alto voices are lighter. And how I try to phrase it, if I can give you some idea, I'll do that again. Now you see, I didn't do that. as soon as we get into semi quavers but control it. He's feeling the 16th notes is really something. I really like that. Is that these semiquavers must be light. They must ripple along. And you're using the thumb an awful lot, which is a very heavy part of one's anatomy, a finger anatomy. I think if you... Maybe for you. I don't know about... I don't know about that. Fingers more, you see. Uh... So he's saying you have other fingers than your thumb. You... Doofus. Don't just use your thumb for everything. Tee da da Tee da da We want more of that effect, you see. Okay. Da 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 Tee da da Okay, I'm, I'm getting a lot from this. I actually am getting a lot from this. I hope you are too. I don't use the thumb. It's only the fingers for lightness. Now listen to this. You see, the character of the thumb has such a uh, force or such strength, as weight, as much more much weight. Much effect when you, when you save it for no, that. That's what I did. I saved it up, you see. Yes. And I let the other two voices just dance along, just using my fingers. Light. Yeah. And, and not these legatos. That too, sounds too much like uh, Mendelssohn or something, right? <laughs> oh, we can't have that, can we? Julian Bream is a real character. I, I think I'm going to watch more of him. Well, thank you very much. I think we'll have to leave. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, so I assume that that's the end of that part, which we're about 18 minutes in, so that, that works out well. So we'll just look at these master classes probably halfway through for a little while. Um, you know, just to give us some context for the fugue. Ladies and gentlemen, Julian Bream. What'd you think of that?
pretty good, right? So I guess we can wrap it up here, and I will move on to practicing the fugue myself. Well, all that's left now is for me to work on my fugue. I'm just gonna read through it probably, and then I'm going to work on my memory. And I will try to incorporate some of the things that uh, he talked about with, like, uh, dynamics and stuff. So, we'll see how that goes. So you know what, I'll actually show you some of the stuff that I'm thinking about. Okay, so first thing, um, I guess I'll just play like the first section so you'll kind of see. Keeping that first section light, do the breath. Also the bass notes. I, I noticed that they were really bringing out those bass notes. I kind of want to try using just fingers. Because I use my thumb pretty heavily for that part. With fingers. And trying to keep the chord light while doing that. Bass notes heavy. Oh. You know, that's just kind of something. And now the arpeggio section was another thing. Um, honestly, I'm just kind of feeling it out right now. <laughs> I don't even. It's hard for me to really even articulate uh, what I'm doing. I think I'll, I'll probably watch it again. I mean, maybe you should watch that again too. You know, that applies to all pieces, not just this one. So here, we, we can go ahead and wrap this one up. I'm going to practice the fugue more later today. All right, yeah. So that pretty much concludes this one. So hope you enjoyed watching Julian Bream and Cameron play the guitar. Um, yeah, if you made it this far, be sure to like and subscribe, comment, leave a comment, tell me how you're doing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tonight.